man. Splinter Cell Blacklist. I'm so excited. Mario Sunshine? They ripped me off! That's it. I'm going back to the store. Getting my money back. Is everything all right down there? Nobody has to play you ever again. The first time I played a Splinter Cell game I was hooked. The games felt flawless to me. They had a compelling story, fun missions, excellent stealth mechanics, and Michael Ironside's voice. Oh my god, these games are good. Anytime someone mentions Splinter Cell, I'm taken back to my favorite scenes or decisions from my favorite missions. Like that time in Chaos Theory when the chef spit in the colonel's food. I thought the kitchen was closed. It's a special order for Colonel Kabayashvili. Ah, excellent. <laughs> May I? Please. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. God, I always knock them out for that. Or there was that other time in Pandora Tomorrow where the final villain asks you about your children. Man, you really learn a lot about Sam there. Do you have children? Where's the smallpox? Huh? How many children? Where are they now? The questioning only gets worse once I'm gone. But I think the one that I remember the most was Dahlia Tall. A Middle Eastern woman who helps you through half a level, keeping you safe from the guards who would otherwise kill you. After she leads you to safety, your boss Lambert tells you to execute her. Fisher, we need Dahlia Tal dead. Kill her. Don't think, just do it. The first time I played, I had no idea what to do. I hesitated for so long before the elevator I was in started to go down, so I finally pulled the trigger. Lambert never explained to me why I had to do it. Tell me what I just did, Lambert. The right thing. Hard work, but it had to happen. Shinbet wasn't playing a straight game. Killing unarmed women seems mighty close to terrorism. Shut up, Fisher. Leave the ethics to us. Grunt and sign off. We need to talk. I felt so awful for the rest of the game, and I had to go back and spare her life. Upon doing that, though, it turned out she was a sniper, and at the end of the very same mission, she tries to kill you. I murdered the hell out of that woman every time I replayed that game and never felt a thing. See, these games are amazing and were tied together so well with conviction, which was modernized to such a degree that it made the game way too easy, but told a tale that really sent the game off. I can't tell you how many times i played through conviction trying to beat the game in a different way each time. Now that I think about it, I did this with every Splinter Cell game, playing them in order just to get the full story of the best third echelon agent in existence and watch his story come to a beautiful end. Imagine my surprise when Blacklist came out. For a long time, I wouldn't play this game. I actually refused to acknowledge its existence for as long as I can remember, and honestly, I wish it was still that way. There was a split in the matrix once I played this game. There was a before I played Blacklist Barry and an after playing Blacklist Barry, and no matter what I do, I can't go back. Now you may be wondering why I never wanted to give this a chance. Why was I so against this? Well, let me explain. Michael Ironside was the voice of Sam Fisher in every Splinter Cell game until this one. Ubisoft decided to cut Michael Ironside because Ubisoft wanted better animations in their games. Because Michael Ironside couldn't tuck and roll, couldn't jump over fences, couldn't float up buildings, they decided to get someone younger and more physically appropriate for the role, which, as we've seen in every game that changes voice actors willy-nilly, this pisses people off. There was no way I was going to be able to play this game and actually think fondly of Sam Fisher, but not even that. Story-wise, a new Splinter Cell game wouldn't make sense. Let me explain for those of you who never played this series. 
In Splinter Cell Double Agent, Sam goes deep undercover to deal with his depression. See, his one and only child Sarah was hit and killed by a drunk driver. His boss Lambert offers him a job to go deep undercover as a terrorist in one of the missions Sam has to kill Lambert, one of his best friends. In Splinter Cell Conviction, you find out that Sarah never died. It was all a con fabricated by Lambert and Third Echelon to get Sam to accept the mission, and after learning about this, Sam vows never to work with these people ever again and tells his daughter that he will never leave her side. But I guess screw it, right? I mean, who cares? It's just your daughter. The last thing that bothered me was how young everyone is in this game. I mean, here's Vic from Conviction, and here he is in Blacklist. Here's Sam from Conviction to Blacklist. At first I thought maybe this game took place in the past, on missions when they were younger, which would have been kind of cool, but nope. This takes place after all the others. Fourth Echelon. Ugh. Enough backstory, let's just play this. Maybe it's not as bad as I'm making it out to be. Nope, it's bad. The story's reminiscent of some TV cop drama. Let Sarah know I'll be offline for a few days. Sarah, she's still single, right? No, that's... I'm gonna take that as a no. Stop hacking base IT, we're guests here. Yeah, but they make it so easy! It's really cringy, too. When I first jumped in, I was hoping that maybe there was a mod out there where I could replace the vocals with Michael Ironsides, but I could never imagine the real Sam Fisher being this cheesy. Man, who got him? Who got him? If I wanted money, I'd break into a bank. So this isn't fun. This isn't fun. They implemented a lethal or non-lethal mechanic that you'll never use other than right now. Okay, that was kind of fun. Wait, I gotta work with Grimm? The woman who lied to me for two years about my daughter being dead? The woman who shot me in the shoulder and fed me to the bad guy in conviction? You want me to work with a woman whose face and breast size changes in every Splinter Cell game she's in? I don't think so. Oh, okay, or I will, that's fine. So the first mission you take is finding and extracting a man named Andre Coben. This is important because he's the guy that Third Echelon hired to pretend to kill your daughter. And oh boy, don't I just love this in sequels. Remember this? Yeah, you liked this from the first game, didn't you? Yeah, I'm gonna set this back down, but you, you like that, remember? Okay. Remember this? The whole intro of the game is just them pandering to people who played Conviction, but I seriously need to stop complaining. Let's just enjoy the game. I told you this would get messy. Oh, you think you're so cool. So this game is very easy, and I really hated this about Conviction. I always had to set it to the max difficulty to get any sort of challenge, and this game is no different. On the normal difficulty, you just get the ability to mark targets by shooting them. At least in Conviction, you had to perform a takedown. It was a reward for being sneaky. Here's just a reward for being crap. So I rescue Coben from his captors, and as they're chasing us out the literal window, he's questioning what Sam tells him to do. The hell, man? Grab on. What? Why? I don't know, maybe I don't want to die on a ledge here. Are you serious? We're supposed to laugh here, because Coben fell like any random civilian would have, and then cue the cop drama scene. So Coben tells you about some lead, and Sam has a good idea where to start his next mission. Our best bet for Coben's buyer is Marawa. I want to be on the ground an hour ago. Ugh, I know what Ubisoft wants me to think here too. They want me to think, oh, Sam's so cool and serious, but he's just so cringy. Mm -hmm. Stop, stop, stop! Uh, oh, 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 you asshole. I'm MI6. Oh, wow, that's a new one. Yeah, no cop drama's ever pulled that one before. God, this game's just the cringiest moments of every episode of NCIS. So this game is still way too easy. Wait, why did you implement dogs? So there's no way around it. You have to kill these things, otherwise they blow your cover. In every mission, I have to make sure that there are no dogs around. And the thing is, if I wanted to do some sort of ghosting walkthrough, these pricks almost make it impossible. I pretty much have to kill them. Thanks, Ubisoft. In the arms of yeah, that's where I shot. Oh god, the dog. Ah! What the fuck? So after I beat that level, we find a video camera with a clip on it of our main antagonist, who's just evil to be evil. His motives are actually kind of understandable. He just wants American troops out of all the countries that it invades. To achieve this, he starts blowing up embassies and killing innocent soldiers, which does pretty much the opposite of what he wants, and exactly demonstrates why American troops are in these countries to begin with. He tries to blow you up, and now you as the player feel that anger. I'm mad. I want to kill that man for what he did to me, even though he doesn't necessarily have a bad point. We sprint through an exploding building like the badass we are, shoot a tether to a tree for some reason, and then somehow magically fly off into a helicopter? What? I literally rewatched this five times and cannot for the life of me figure this part out, but I mean, I guess it looked cool, am I right? We get back to the military spaceship and find out that all of the other teams were destroyed and Sam's team was the only ones who made it out alive. Instantly, we find out who the bad guy was and it's off to Chicago after an annoying banter from everyone on board. The mission is just a normal mission, but I gotta admit, it's kind of fun. 
Even though this game ruins the story and kills the Sam Fisher that I used to know and love, I gotta admit, the gameplay is- Wait, what the hell do I do here? I'm supposed to disarm this chemical bomb, but how? The game doesn't give me any hints. Maybe I'll look over here? No, nothing. After looking it up, I'm supposed to press the space bar to activate it, but it's still not working. There's no prompt or anything, it's just- Oh, well that's stupid. So I do have to press the space bar. I have to press the space bar twice for it to register. Okay, cool. So I get a tutorial on how to switch to lethal mode, but this? This took me forever to figure out. There's no prompt or anything, but whatever. I can cry about insignificant crap some other time. After we close down the water treatment facility, Sam decides that maybe we should go on the offensive. Attack the bad guys at their own HQ. But wait, everyone asks, how are we going to attack if we don't know where they are? We hunt them down. Oh, so that thing we're currently already doing. Hey, that was a good briefing. I feel like we were really productive there, Sam. This whole segment decided to put a lot of cringe together all at once for some reason. You hacked Walter Reed? Wow, it's only hacking if you have to try. Ugh. Tracking software. Single pixel web beacon. Single pixel web beacon? That's why we won't waste time playing defense. We have another option? Are you retarded? Wanna bust into a fortress? I got exactly what you need. What? You want, you want it now? Because, I mean, it's not finished per se. I, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just get it. Oh god, enough of this. The team used Coben to bait and lure someone who might know where the antagonist is, so let's go get him. Hey, some guards you have here. Seems to me you got the ones that can see in two directions at once. Smart. To be honest, this part is really fun. I just ran around the property executing everyone who was connected to the bad guy. Now look, I get it. Barry, these people were hired. They don't know the bigger picture, but when you get into a job like dual directional bodyguarding, you know you might get killed someday. It comes with the territory, I'm sorry. As I ran around the property killing guards, I realized two things. One, this guy is loaded, and two, Ubisoft has some of the funniest ragdoll physics I've ever encountered. This part was really annoying, by the way. If you play these types of games with the objective of never getting caught, you're gonna have to make this level an exception, because the guards all know where you are instantly. Plus, they added the dogs again! The rest of this mission is pretty fun, though. You just help Rich Guy escape the mansion and he provides intel on the bad guy. We get back to the plane for more cringy dialogue, only to find out that our antagonist had an entire sleeper cell with a few dozen agents from every branch of military all around the world whom have all been activated. Lucky for us, they all gathered together at the same spot, so all we have to do is go kill them and day saved. Ollie oop This mission is pretty fun, actually. It even got a bit tricky every now and then. We get to the bad guy's briefing room and it seems they're planning a large-scale attack on America. Some sort of nuke, so now it's getting serious. Sam notices people loading the last shipment of whatever onto a truck and decides to set a tracker into it to see where it goes. Smart plan, other than the potential radiation poisoning, but there's no reason Sam would be exposed to that, right? Except he decides to open the bomb to its core and just leave it open for nerve gas to flood out while taking the largest gas he possibly can. I wonder what's gonna happen. Sam learns that Sadiq, our main antagonist, might be at the facility and with that we're on our way. The entire time, Sam is getting blurry vision from the exposure to the nerve gas, but doesn't think maybe it's a good idea to tell his team about that, which is not how the real Sam Fisher would have acted. They made this character so two-dimensional in this game, it's pathetic, but just as we figured, this hinders him from taking down Sadiq, and now we're captured. Not much of a welcome party. Not much of a welcome party? <laughs> you deserve to get hit for that. Sadiq comes in, flaunting his dominance, practically waving his scrotum everywhere, just trying even harder to make you, the player, hate him. Aw, oh, dude, come on, can't you use a door? Briggs fails to shoot Sadiq, instead saving your life, and that makes Sam mad. We could have ended this. We had Sadiq. What'd you want me to do? Finish the job, Briggs! Nothing comes before that. Not me, not you, nothing. Weird, because in all the other games, Sam always thought about his daughter first. His family was the most important thing. I mean, that was the moral of Splinter Cell Conviction. Sam tells Briggs that this is his last mission and he's never going out into the field ever again, which opens up a cliche where these two are going to get along later. Gross. Now at this moment you might be thinking, Sam came into contact with nerve gas. Are they going to follow that up? And the answer to that question is no. Sam just decides to walk it off and nobody even acknowledges that he was probably in the sickbay for a few days fighting for his life. Nope, all good. And I need to be clear on this because it might save your life someday. If you're ever bit by a rattlesnake, or come into contact with radiation, or breathe in some poisonous gas, just ignore it and it'll go away. It's typically more afraid of you than you are of it. Sam then decides to head to Iran to stop a war. That's right, next mission. So after we sneak our way through the most boring intro mission ever, we finally made it inside the Iranian embassy. 
Now all we have to do is let the general lead us to the information we need, and... Wait. Why is he just standing there? Dude, there are no guards around, we can go. Wait, what's with the gun? Wait! Aw, oh, come on! So after this happening again and again, it turns out that there's a glitch at this specific part of the game where the general turns into a guard. He hears your footsteps and reacts. If he catches you, he'll alert everyone in the building, which strictly violates the agreement we had. I don't talk to American spies. Not even when they have a targeting solution on your wife and child. Well, looks like I gotta kill your family. Upon looking it up, I found a way to fix the glitch. Now, watch closely, because this is important. No, I'm not joking. Welcome back, General. Not like it matters, because he just turns on you anyway. Let's just call this foreshadowing then. So you kill all these guards, and now you gotta make your way through the embassy searching for the data. Oh look, one of those guards again. Alright, download complete. Now we can get out of here. Suck it, door! This part is annoying, and I officially hate this mission! Once the mission is over, Grimm tells Sam that he cares about Vic and Sarah more than the mission. Sam realizes Briggs and he have a lot in common. Guess who gets to go on the next mission? So we find out that the bombs are being delivered to Eastern Oregon. They actually give an exact location. I know the street that they mention in the game, but then listen to this. Land the plane. Philly International gave us the all clear to set up on their turf. Philly International? Okay, Philly International, yeah. Yeah, okay, that seems like a logical place to land. Oregon's practically right next door. So we're in Philadelphia now? Okay, wait a minute, let me get this straight. The bad guys went from the UK to get the bombs, then to Eastern Oregon to load the trucks, and then drove all the way to Philadelphia? This seems really inefficient. You guys could do with a travel agent. Also, hard hats are bulletproof. Game logic. So Sam defuses the first bomb, and now you play as Briggs, who is in charge of defusing the second bomb. Now, Briggs has a much different playstyle, as he's a first-person-only character, and he has ragdoll powers. He defuses his bomb, and now Sam has to go find the third one with a new enemy in the ring. Landmines. Honestly, it's almost impossible to accidentally step on one of these things. They beep louder and faster when you get close, and they're not even hidden at all. After Sam defuses the third bomb, it's Briggs' turn again to defuse a fourth. Oh shit, Charlie. I think I pulled a red wire. Is that bad? Oh, what? No gas! Get out of there! Gotcha. Asshole. Okay, you know what? I gotta admit, that was pretty good. This next part, however, not good, not fun, just annoying, and glitchy. The enemies can kill me instantly all of a sudden. I'm supposed to break through this window here and take cover, but I just die over and over again. I honestly think the only reason that I was able to beat this was out of sheer luck. So the bad guy gets killed by some cop, and then they do that really funny thing. You know that thing that no other cop drama's ever done where they make law enforcement seem inept and out of the loop? Yeah, I love it, it's a classic. So we go back to the ship. No leads, out of ideas, with the terrorists upset that their bombs were all defused. All of a sudden, we get a tip about Rich Guy. Convenient, remember Rich Guy? Well, apparently he had more information, and because of this, he was locked up in Guantanamo Bay. Now we have to break into Gitmo and figure out what he knows. Sound cliche enough? Good. Most of this mission isn't even gameplay, but I mean, if you're captivated by the brilliant story, then I guess you shouldn't mind so much, right? Rich Guy tells you that Sadiq knows everything about your team and then asks you to kill him. Hey, uh, quick question, before I snap your neck, is there any chance that I can get into the will? Ah, oh, crap, I forgot my pen, never mind. All there's left to do now is escape Guantanamo. Jeez, dude, lay off the Pringles. The game starts to get annoying again with more of this, more of this, and more of this. Don't like, not fun. Back on the ship, the crew realizes randomly that Sadiq doesn't actually want American troops out of other countries, and they spend a good two minutes trying to figure out if Sadiq likes butter bread or shrimp as his main entree at Red Lobster. All the while, Sadiq has been watching them the whole time. Very astute. But I prefer Linguini. You monster. Sadiq takes control of their super spy plane, causing it to plummet towards Earth. Can you fly? Yes! I mean, no. Those are two very different things, buddy. So we need another pilot, and the only person who can save the day? Andre Coben, cause why not? Remember this? So now it's your job to cut the power, reboot the system, and drop the cargo out of the plane to buy some time. You soon find out that none of that actually saved time, just made you waste time so your butt would clench even harder when everyone's yelling at you in a few minutes. The plane kicks back on and we all miss death by a split second. Charlie here tells Grimm that he is responsible for the plane going down. Apparently every time we landed, he was reaching out to friends in the area and they all sold his information to Sadiq. Good friends, right? We have to tell the others, he says, but Grimm decides that this is the perfect time to keep secrets. Good friends, right? When comms come back online, we find out that Sadiq struck a major gas line and the fire's spreading across America. Now it's our job to put this fire out. This mission was actually a lot of fun. I spent the entire time sneaking around killing people, taking my time with each kill knowing that the longer I waited, the hotter that fire would burn across America. Oh crap, I gotta go! Charlie's able to use a computer to put out the fire, cause welcome to the future I guess, that's how things work now. 
Charlie also finds the guy who started the fire and we're off to find him. Shit! Whoa, come on now, did he really deserve that? I mean, I'm probably just gonna kill him anyway, but still, that was rude. He starts to run away, so now we gotta chase after him. This part is unlosable, the game kinda just hands this one over to you. Every time you run into one of these guys, you get to decide whether to spare them or kill them. It's kinda like pretending the outcome changes the game, but nothing really does change. Even still, I spared this guy because I figured the pain would last longer. He ends up telling us that the president negotiated with terrorists, handing her own people over for the sake of America. Sam then decides to take this news out on a perfectly good touch desk. What the hell are you doing? We get in a call with Madam President and she tells us to stand down and that we're all going home. Any plane that flies into Denver, which is where Sadiq is, will be shot down. After the call is ended, the entire team has to decide if they want to defy the president or not. You actually have to make them all say yes, which is really redundant. I had to make one of them hold the mission just to see what would happen. It was dumb of me to think anything unique, it just stops the mission. Briggs, you prick. Now that everyone's ready, Briggs, it's off to Denver. Yeah, no, that plane's only going about 280 miles an hour, no big. Hey, you guys want to cringe some more? What do we do now? Hope. Gross. So this level's annoying in a lot of places, and it goes on forever. I think this last mission's about an hour long, and most of it's just waiting for the lasers to move out of your way. So we get to the end of that, kill this guy down here, and oh. Well, would you look at that. This was most certainly not here before. Oh god, more of this. After you climb down and finish all your tedious tasks, you find out that the Secretary of Defense has been kidnapped. Sadiq is apparently trying to get nuclear launch codes, so Briggs decides to get himself caught. I'm sorry. Whoa, that's one way to keep a secret. By the way, Briggs, you sort of deserve what you're getting. Kind of a douche move. Briggs and all the other hostages are taken outside, and now as Sam, you have to hunt down Sadiq for the final time. They didn't even make this last boss fight fun. You just have to stay hidden, and then once you're close enough, it's a bunch of quick time events. Nothing says satisfying like an end boss on rails. So you take Sadiq down, and he starts talking about how he's thought all of this through. It's actually a pretty compelling point in the game. You think this ends with me? There are... 12 nations that stand behind the engineers. Behind me! Are you ready to fight 12 wars? Kill me! Kill me! Those nations will rise up. Put me on trial. And I will spill every secret I know! I've already won! Yes, finally! A real choice that actually impacts the game! There's always another option. What? I don't get to choose? Oh no, what did I expect? So apparently the president issued a statement that the terrorist group shall remain nameless and Sadiq will be interrogated in a top secret location so nobody knows if he's even alive anymore. The president also doesn't get in any trouble for negotiating with terrorists or handing her secretary of defense over to be eliminated. And I only know this because I had to look it up. Because my game froze at the final cutscene and all I saw was this. That the United States has conducted an operation that has killed Majid Sadiq, the leader of the terrorist organization known as the Engineers. Kind of a fitting ending to be completely honest. There were a lot of things about this game that bothered me and I really wish I could have gotten to all of it. If you haven't already, please pick up the Splinter Cell games. Just not this one. I made this video as a service to those who have played this series and those who haven't, so you never have to suffer through it. You're welcome. And I'll see you in the next one. You killed the fuck out of him. <laughs>